What is up, everybody? Uh, Bryce here from Whitmix. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I have with me uh, Evan Kemper, and uh, today we're going to be doing our uh, our Hawaiian Shirt Friday edition of our uh, Whitmix training session. So thanks so much for coming. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some uh, a little uh, some more nerdy dorky topics, and uh, which fits Evan and I pretty well because we're into this kind of thing. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of uh, uh, PC stuff today. Um, and uh, before we start, uh, Evan, if you just want to give your uh, give the, give everybody just a little bit of uh, introduction as to who you are, in case they don't already know. Yep. So uh, my name is Evan Kemper. I'm an application engineer here at Whitmix. Um, most of my job, uh, part of it revolves around the training and uh, support, but a good other chunk of it is actually um, a little bit of software development uh, internally, and then also R&D and testing. Uh, engineering and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then as far as my computer background, it's uh, I have a bachelor's degree in computer science with a focus on programming. Um, and then I've kind of loved technology my whole life. So I've, you know, do all kinds of tinkering with it. Uh, I've gone as far as even building my own 3D printer. Um, so this is the kind of stuff I love and I'm happy to kind of share our knowledge with you. Awesome. Yep. Evan is definitely uh, uh, the PC guy at Whitmix. I, uh, I, I, I do I do my best. Uh, I I'm much more of a hobbyist, and Evan is uh, Evan is the man when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, so so yes, yeah. super nerd. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. The super nerd. We'll go with that. Um, so FYI for everybody, you should have down below your little uh, your little window. You should have a questions area. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in, and uh, we'll be answering those kind of as we go along. Uh, I we I see we already have one not so much a question but Ray says oh no I didn't get the uh, get the shirt memo <laughs> uh, yeah you know we uh, we just kind of decided last minute we were gonna make it Hawaiian shirt Friday so here we are um, so let's start out by talking about just some kind of routine maintenance and uh, uh, what we can do with our CAD CAM PCs to to kind of increase the long the longevity the performance. Um, uh, which really has a huge impact on your productivity. Um, so let's talk first about um, uh, three shape data backup. Um, this is probably one of the most common questions we get is, um, uh, you know, I've got my, my, my three shape software is running super slow. Um, I think I have a, a ton of uh, orders in my uh, database and um, what do I do about it? Um, I do have a comment here. I can't hear you. So everybody, can everybody hear us? Just want to put that out there. Okay. So Ray there must yes. be an issue with the speakers on, uh, or the audio on that okay. end. Yeah. Okay. Everyone can hear us. Cool. Just want to make sure. Um, so yeah, one of the most common questions we get is how do we back up our three shape data? Um, it's, a, it's a good question, um, and I definitely recommend backing up all at least uh, at the very least all of your orders, um, because you know oftentimes you need to go back maybe six months or e even a year um, to find a case and to either review it or reprint something or remill something. Um, so so let's talk about. Uh, how we go about backing up that data. Now, there's there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, the easiest way is to just get like an external hard drive, um, and then um, I will attempt to share my screen, and let's see if I can pull up the uh, the installation folder where all of the actual uh, where all, all the actually held. All right, let me find. Hmm, I can't find the uh, share screen here. Um, I can go ahead and show mine, or let me try. Yeah, mine's, mine's grayed out, Evan, so you might have to do it. Hang on, try it now. Um, there we go. Now I can. Okay. Yeah, I'll just sw I'll switch to the presenter. All right. So can everybody 
Can everybody see my screen, hopefully? Yep. Okay, cool. So, um, so where this data is going to be located is going to somewhat depend on the type of installation that you have. So uh, some of you might have your three shape software installed as a standalone, and then some of you might have it installed as a server. Uh, if it is installed as a server, uh, you're going to go into your file explorer and under the network uh, down here uh, on kind of your side uh, little quick selection bar, um, you want to find your PC, the current PC that you're using as your server and you're gonna open up that network drive. And then in there, you're gonna find three shape dental system orders. So um, if, we, if we open this, uh, this file, all of your different cases are gonna be in here. Um, and you know, you, the, the easiest way to do this is just copy and paste those over to an external hard drive. Um, it's super simple, uh, doesn't take long. You can do it you know, once a month um, and just copy everything over and then you've got all of your cases backed up. So it's super simple uh, and really easy to do. And then from there, uh, after you do that, you can, then, um, you can then actually go in and delete uh, any cases that you want from this folder manually, or there's also an option in 3Shape Control Panel to automatically delete orders older than uh, a period of time that you indicate uh, in the Control Panel. Um, so in terms of backing up your three shape cases, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, if you want to back up your DME files, like all of your materials, uh, you can actually just export all of those out from the control panel um, and create a backup that way. Uh, Evan, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I was just gonna show that general uh, workflow. Let me just switch to presenter real quick. Let's make sure we got the right screen. Okay, so that's just in three shape control panel if you just open that up. Um, one thing I wanted to add to uh, what Bryce was showing is that that'll back up the data, um, but that doesn't actually back up the, uh, what's called a SQL database, which is what, when you open dental manager, what's actually showing those different lines. And some of you may have gone through this process, like if we've had to roll software back where you can't roll back the database, uh, we have to re-import your cases um, one at a time or through the uh, multiple import option, which can be kind of tedious. There are some ways, and it gets a little bit more technical, that you can get a, some softwares that will allow you to back up that database. Um, if that's something that you want to you know, kind of see or get into, then we'd be happy to kind of talk through that at a, a later time. It's not really something we need to go into here, um, but there are ways to protect, protect that as well. Um, so once the three shape control panel is open, if you just go to import export on the bottom and then expand export materials, then we can hit the export button. And then you can select just certain stuff if you don't wanna do a full backup. Um, this process can take a while, especially if you have a lot of implant libraries. So if I just, check the top box, that would be everything in my control panel. And then I would hit export to file. And then just pick a place to save it. Uh, for instance, we mentioned an external. So I've got an external hard drive hooked up here uh, where I do my um, Windows image backups, but I could also save this here. And then you just give it a file name and hit save. Now I'm not gonna do it because it would take a while here, um, but that's something you maybe do at night before you leave and then should be done in the morning. Uh, and, and it's a good idea to probably do that every time you make any significant changes in your control panel or get a new DME from a manufacturer. That way, if we do have to roll the software back for whatever reason, or let's say your computer dies and you can't recover that info, then you still have it somewhere that's not on that computer. Anything else you want to add to that, Bryce? No, no, that's that sounds good. Um, <clears throat> so that, that, that kind of gives you the gist of, of the, the best way to back up your data, uh, specifically three shape data. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Windows backup and third party backups. Um, so, so it also is it's not a bad idea uh, to back up your entire Windows system. Um, it's not that difficult to do, um, and uh, it's actually built into your Windows operating system. So, if you go into your search bar. 
um, and you go into backup settings, you just you just search, just start typing backup. Um, you can actually you can actually um, set up uh, a backup option here um, to do so. Let me see if I can. Uh, do you want to show it on your end since you're presenting yeah, it? Yeah, since it's already up, yep. I can just go ahead and show it. So that to get to that, again, like he said, you just open your start menu. You can either click on the settings icon on Windows 10 or just start typing backup. Although my uh, search indexing is messed up on this computer right now, so we'll do it this way. Settings, and then from home, you can type backup here and just go to backup settings. And then um, there's a couple different ways, like Bryce was saying. Uh, the newer method is this backup using file history, where you basically just select folders you want to back up. Um, so you pick a drive. And then it'll start saving um, the important files on that drive. Uh, the other method is to go here to the old Windows 7 method, which is actually going to create a, a backup or a system image. So the backup, again, is just going to set um, important folders on an external hard drive. The system image will actually create a complete image, including the operating system, so that if you had a um, like a hard drive failure and you're backing up to another, um, well, even an external or um, then you could actually just restore that image and it would basically whatever new hard drive you restore it to you just put in your uh, computer and run from there um, so here i'll just select my external click next and then if you let windows choose it's just going to pick like system files and i think like documents and stuff like that but you would probably want to let me choose and then pick your three shape folder so that's on c drive three shape that'd be an important one um, applications and stuff you don't necessarily need to back up those because typically they can be reinstalled um, but it's mainly the data that you want to protect and if i hit next then it's gonna save this and it'll run it on a uh, windows task schedule so it'll keep doing it uh, periodically you and you can set up you can set up that schedule however however you want, right, Evan? You can you yeah, can schedule that yeah. every day. You can schedule it every week, once a month, whatever you choose. And typically, I would recommend uh, setting it to do it at night, because otherwise, um, if it's if it starts doing it while you're working, it can take a fair amount of computer resources. And if you don't have a pretty modern PC, then you're going to start noticing performance hits in your um, CAD software while you're trying to use it. Yeah. Cool. Um, Evan, what experience do you have with any third-party backup softwares? I know you use uh, you use one called Acronis, right? Is that is that mm -hmm. the one that you that you've used before? What can you tell yeah. us about that? Um, so it's a pretty nice software, and I actually just download the trial in here so we can kind of walk through it. Um, but again, it doesn't break the bank. It's fifty dollars, and what this does is if you combine it with, this is what's called a uh, hard drive docking bay. So you can buy these and what it, it does is you can uh, take an internal hard drive, you know, one that uh, you would technically be replacing um, the internal hard drive of the computer with if something happens. So you can buy one and you'll just dock it in here. And then with a Cronus, let me go ahead and install it real quick. Um, what it does is this is the kind of software that will do a full system image basically clones your your existing data onto that new hard drive and so if for whatever reason say you get a virus or the internal hard drive starts failing then all you have to do is open the side of your computer and swap the two drives and you'll be back up and running and then you replace the bad drive and get a new one and start uh, the clone process again and that way you're pretty much protected unless something you know really bad like you know a natural disaster or you know uh, you the whole lab is gone <laughs> uh in that now case this, you would, you need offsite this, backups but that's a little bit <laughs> now this will even protect you in the event of coronavirus right so yes <laughs> so even if even if coronavirus hits again your data is safe now volcano safe volcano, maybe not yeah. you might be in trouble 
Okay. Um, so that's, um, so you've got that installing. Um, yeah. okay. So, um, so when you say, uh, so let's say hypothetically, um, someone gets one of the hard drive, hard drive docking bays and, um, uh, they need to actually go ahead and swap out the hard drive. So do you need to reinstall windows or is windows, is it, is it literally just a, just a swap them out kind of situation? It, if you're using something like a Cronus true image, then it is literally just to swap it out. So we're looking you know. at 30 seconds. To, yeah. I mean, you're up and running yeah, a couple minutes. Once you figure out how to poke around there and find the hard drive, yep. you pull out. But um, mm -hmm. if you're talking about the other methods, like even a windows image backup to like a external hard drive that still requires uh, windows to be reinstalled and then yep. a, um, and then you restore from that backup. So the, the easiest way, even though it actually costs a little bit more upfront, is to probably go with a Cronus or, or something similar. There are other uh, kind of cloning softwares out there. Um, and I think there, you know, this is, that was $50 for the personal, which would be fine if you're just backing up like your CAD or CAM computer. Um, but they do have some business solutions that can, I believe, even offer offsite. So like cloud backups, that way, Again, volcano <laughs> or something like that. Uh, then you, once you get your new computer, then you can just uh, bring everything back down from the cloud. Uh, cool. Uh, and the other well, way, you, oh, go ahead. That, I mean, the the Acronis route seems like it's going to be the best option for someone that maybe isn't like super tech savvy, um, yep. because it doesn't require any kind of operating system installation. It doesn't require any yeah. super in-depth software knowledge, really. Um, it's just kind of plug and play, it seems like, for the most part. Yeah, and if you get one of these dual docks, you could actually clone two drives and say, you know, only bring the, the second drive in like once a month, do a backup and take it home, and there's your offsite, you know, or maybe mm -hmm. once a week. Nice. Uh, yeah, so there's definitely some ways to do that, but I mean, for the price, I mean, $50, 90 plus your two if you just get regular hard drives uh you know you could have that all for about 200 bucks that's and, really not um, that's not that much yeah and that way you're protected I, I mean i've seen plenty plenty of times where it would have been nice if somebody had this and uh when you know they lose all their data because they weren't backing it up yeah um so that 50 dollars for a cronus is that um is that a yearly license or is that a one-time purchase? I think it's a one-time purchase for like the 2020 version. So you can use it, as, I think, as much as you want. Let's see if they have any info on that. Yeah. So one yeah, one-time purchase or you can do a yearly subscription. Okay. I mean, even still, 50 bucks yeah. a year is just not, I mean. Yeah. I mean, what is your data worth, you know? Exactly. I don't need that open anymore. Let's see if this is done. All right, so we'll start the application. Sign my life away. Yep. <laughs> they own you. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny what some companies have put in the end user license agreements. So here I don't have a key, so I'm just going to hit start trial. And dang it, I don't want to sign up. Well, I guess if you want to see this, we can uh, we could set up a time to kind of show it. Uh, I don't want to take our time signing up for an account, um, but it's pretty straightforward. It's it's similar to just how we set up the Windows backup. I mean, it walks you through the steps. Pick the external drive. Pick the drive you want to clone, set a schedule. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so let's see here. So we have questions. Um, how are you managing? This is from Ray. Um, actually, no, let's see. Uh, Brandon, Staple, Dr. Stapleton says, uh, of course, we have 2020. <laughs> Gimme. Uh, yeah, so we did get a beta version of uh, the 2020 version of three shape uh, and we are in the process of beta testing all of the new features uh, of which there are many uh, i will say i will tell you that there's a lot of cool new features coming in 2020 
Um, I, I have not heard from 3Shape an official release date on it yet, um, but I would anticipate early to mid-summer would be my guess. Evan, what do you what do That's you That's typically what it's been for the past couple of releases. My only thought beyond that is that there may it may get pushed back due to staffing levels. I mean, I've yeah. seen... Well, actually, Bryce and I just had a, a game release that we were wanting to come out in April, got pushed back to August or something because of trying to develop uh, with a remote staff. just wasn't working. So, yeah, I'm not happy about that. Nope. Not happy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, Ray says, how are you managing issues that the automatic updates for Windows 10 create? Good question. We're actually going to touch on that a little bit later. Um, so we, we will be answering that question uh, momentarily. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just do it now because it's kind of in the same yeah. section with maintenance. Um, so yeah, Windows 10 updates can definitely cause some issues. Um, the best answer that I can give, and maybe Evan will have something different, is um, you're going to run into more issues by not applying the Windows updates, uh, from my experience. Um, unfortunately, Microsoft has, for the most part, disabled the ability to roll back updates, which um, for me is incredibly frustrating. Um, I don't, it uh, doesn't yeah. make any sense, but um, honestly, the best answer I can give is just make sure you apply all the updates. There have been some, especially in the last year, that have really uh, kind of caused some funky issues, not even just with ReShape, yeah. just with people's PCs all around. Um, Evan, what are your what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, and and the biggest thing on that, I mean, one of the one of the big ones that pops into my mind, really, there's two. There was a lot of issues with uh, Windows deleting people's documents randomly, um, but that's a case where if you have a backup, then yeah, it's a headache. But Microsoft did eventually address and fix it. But it's um, since you have the backup, it's not the end of the world if it deletes something that you needed. Um, yeah. Uh, the other one that comes to mind, especially one that I've dealt with with a couple of our customers, is Windows uh, update getting hung in the log process and creating a ton of log files until it fills up your hard drive. Um, and so that actually kind of brings me to another piece of software I wanted to mention that's free. And that's, you know, if you come in and all of a sudden, you know, you weren't getting any kind of like hard drive, you know, spaces, low messages. And then you come in one day and you, it's just all of a sudden it's full or you have issues creating orders uh, because there's no space. Uh, then this tool will actually let you kind of analyze your hard drive and see what's taking up the space. Um, it's called Win Directory Statistics or Winderstat. So if you just Google Winderstat, you can download it. Um, I've already got it installed and I actually use this at home as well. So let me uh, switch screens real quick. All right, what are we? Okay. So it looks like this little tree, we'll just open that and it pops up initially with all the different drives I could scan. So if I just scan the C drive, um, that's where most of your data is going to be installed by default unless you moved it. Then it just goes through, starts analyzing all these folders and sorting them by size. Yeah, I will say I use this at home as well, uh, and it's very useful. So uh, on my home PC, um, which I will briefly, here's my, my beautiful home PC. Um, I wish I could show mine. <laughs> Evans is a tank, uh, makes mine look like a child's toy. Um, so on my home PC, uh, my boot drive is an M2 drive or an NVMe drive, non-volatile memory drive. It's basically, it's a little, for those of you that don't know, it's, a, it's, it's essentially a storage drive, but instead of being a, you know, a three and a half inch hard drive disc, it's a, just a little tiny Looks, it's about the size of a USB stick, and it and it it uh, integrates directly into the motherboard, um, and it's only 128 gigs. So I only use it as my boot drive. I only basically use it to to house my operating system. Um, and uh, actually, just a couple of days ago, I was just kind of messing around on my PC, and I noticed it was filling up. I only had like you know 30 gigs left on. I'm like, ah, oh, that doesn't seem right. I should have a lot more than that because I have two other hard drives where I keep all of my data and programs. Um, so I ran Win Directory Stat, 
and um, I discovered that I had a for some reason I don't know how it happened, but on I had it in my um, in my music folder I had like a I had probably I don't know twenty or thirty gigs of music that somehow got moved from one of my other hard drives to um, to my boot drive, and I never would have been able to figure that out if I didn't have this little piece of software. So um, it is really useful. Uh, it can help you keep things clean and keep keep your storage uh, your storage space um, nice and tidy. Um, while this is yeah. running, Evan, do we uh, do we want to talk about uh, defragmenting? Um, because I think most people that are using a three shape PC, um, like the like the PC from three shape, are actually using hard disks. In which case, yeah. defragmenting is probably not a bad idea periodically. Yeah, yeah. So um, if you are running basically the the standard model, uh, three shape tower, or a lot, even still a lot of the off the shelf ones you might buy if you're adding computers, they are probably still running a uh, hard disk drive. So that's the mechanical ones that have the spinning platters. Um, if you get the the higher end three shape ones, uh, I think the top tier one does come with a SSD in it. Um, or if you've actually swapped in an SSD, then you don't, SSDs don't need defragmentation. Um, but to do, to defragment a hard drive, uh, there's a couple ways you can get to it. I think you can still get to it through File Explorer. And if you right click, one of the drives. Let's see if we can. No, I guess you uh, let's see about properties. And then if you go to tools, then you can go to optimize and defragment drive. And of course, you'll pick C drive. So here you can see that mine is. 0% uh, fragmented right now. And it was last run at 2.30 AM. I think I've set this to do periodic uh, defragmentation. Um, but you could just hit Analyze. Um, and that'll analyze the drive. And if it does come back with a, you know, some percentage of fragmentation, then I'd go ahead and hit Optimize and let it um, defragment it. Yeah. You can see here, so yeah, I did set a schedule. So uh, you could go in and do that. And I have it do it apparently every morning at 2:30. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what um, actual what what fragmenting of your hard disk actually is, because not everybody um, everybody might not really understand what it is. And the best way, Evan, you might have a better way of explaining it. The best way that I can explain it is um, your when you're using a traditional hard disk, so a hard drive. Uh, which is not the same as a solid state drive. Those are two different things, even though people oftentimes use the terms interchangeably, they are not interchangeable. They are two very different devices. So hard disk um, essentially operates kind of like a record player. There are there are these circular platters and data is physically written to those platters. There's a little mechanical arm that basically functions like a, a record player where it writes data to these platters. Now over time, you know, let's say let's say you, you get your new PC and you know, you're two years in and over over the period of that two years, you've been adding files, deleting files, adding files, deleting files. And eventually all that data is spread out all over those platters. And and there are essentially little voids from where you've added stuff and then deleted it. And um, basically your read write times are going to be are, are going to end up a lot longer because that data is spread out all over those all over those platters. That that is what fragmenting is. Now, when we defrag a hard disk, what we're basically doing is moving all of that data um, kind of back to an ideal location that's going to reduce those read write times. Is that is that yeah. sound about right, Evan? Mm -hmm. All right. So winter stat is just about done. The little Pac-Men are, are working hard. <laughs> yeah, they're working hard. So, and just so you know, this is a this is a three-shaped tower, but it, the stock one that was shipped with D1000s, that's a five years old though. So, uh, when we start talking about keeping hardware up to date, then we'll make some comparisons between this and a system that we just uh, put in or bought and put in here um, for our model building uh, person. Let's see, are there any questions to address while we're waiting on this?
let's see. Um, uh, Nikki, Nikki Smith, uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon is uh, Nikki Smith and Brandon Smith. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Brandon works for Three Shape, um, and Brandon is, is uh, her husband. Um, uh, Nikki says Brandon said they they are in the fourth beta test with 2020 software and there's no release date yet. What he does know is 2020 will be released uh, later than usual due to COVID-19. So yeah, that's uh, that's probably to be expected. The nice thing that uh, the nice thing is though um, we've we've been beta testing it internally. So we got we got a, a copy of it and um, we've been trying out a lot of the new features and so far it's running very smoothly. So um, Nikki, uh, let Brandon know that uh, I do enjoy the new 2020 release so far. Um, let's see what Brand, uh, Brandon Stapleton says. What makes uh, PC? I think he means like um, basically Windows the ideal platform for the dental lab software. I run my practice on Macs and have almost no issue with maintenance, uh, etc. Literally, my only PCs, personally or professionally, are my lab PCs. Think, think that I'll ever switch? Very broad question. Uh, just so many maintenance issues on PC, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, there's no doubt that uh, uh, um, Windows PCs are uh, require a little more maintenance. Um, that is one of the cons. Um, the upside is um, uh, developers typically release software uh, on PC before Mac. Um, not always, um, but as a general rule. Uh, the other thing is uh, PCs are modular, uh, Macs are not. Uh, you can, I can right now, and we're gonna actually do this uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna go to a, a website called PC Part Picker and we're gonna build a PC. Uh, you can't do that with Macs, uh, you just can't. Uh, I, I mean, generally, I mean, yes, you can, you can um, there are ways to get around that, but as a general rule, um, PCs are modular and Macs really aren't. Um, uh, Macs are basically closed um, and yeah, PCs are just uh, a lot more open, a lot more customizable. Yeah, and yeah, and to add to that, I mean, that's the one of the big reasons and uh, that is also part of the reason that you get more maintenance issues is, um, you know, with Apple, they kind of, as you can see the same thing with Android versus iOS because they do the hardware and the software, they can really iron out a lot of these wrinkles before it ever hits the end user. However, with Microsoft being a software company and then them building, you know, there being all these different hardware makers, then they've got a, there's more potential that you have an issue there that, that has to be addressed. Yep. Um, but that also, again, and until probably the past decade or so, um, I mean, the amount of Macs versus the amount of PCs out there was just, I mean, a, not even a competition. Um, so uh, developers are obviously going to target the bigger market share, uh, when, uh, you know, to try and get their software spread out. Mm -hmm. um, now, you can still run these things on a Mac, but you have to use boot camp and install Windows. So you're still uh, not using, you know, OS X for that. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um, looks like uh, so, Winterstat is done. Yeah, so here, and I actually had to use this last night on my computer at home. Uh, I, again, uh, just randomly it said my hard drive was full, so I went in and used this, found out that I, one of the game clients that I have created a 75 gigabyte log file. So again, something I never would have found just trying to poke around. Um, but each of these folders, it'll show you, you know, the size of the folder and then a percentage of the space it's taking up. And you can just expand them to drill down and find what's taken up all your space. Um, so, uh, sorry about that. Right here, so I've got some GoPro footage that I've shot. So if I wanted to get rid of that, then I can just go in, find the videos and remove them. But now I know exactly what's taken up that 90 gigs. So it's really good for kind of finding those big files that may not always be obvious uh, that are taking up space that you may not need. Um, so again, good tool. It's free. Cool. Uh, but we, yeah, we can move on to the next topic. Um, let's talk about driver updates. This is something that almost nobody does um, and is very, very important. Um, uh, Evan, if you 
don't mind. Uh, oh, I think I can make myself the presenter. Sweet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to talk about updating drivers and uh, why it's why it's important. Uh, let's see. What screen am I sharing? The one that your browser just popped up on. Cool. So um, there's a lot of different uh, there's a lot of different softwares that you can use to search and update for drivers. Um, the one that I use is Driver Booster. Uh, it's free and it works really well. Um, so if you just go into your web browser and you type in uh, Driver Booster, um, and there will be an IOBit downloader for Driver Booster, and then Whoa, music. Uh, let me pull it up here because I have it installed. So uh, for those of you that don't know what drivers are, drivers are basically um, um, hardware component specific pieces of, of software slash firmware. So every single little component in your PC, so the CPU, the graphics card, the memory, your hard drives, your USB, uh, your USB ports, everything has a driver. Um, which is basically the software that tells it how to function and how to function optimally. Um, and, and these, uh, there are routine, very routine updates for these. So you can see here, I've got driver booster open and I just did a quick search and I can see here, I have, uh, I have two uh, driver updates available, one for my graphics card and one for my, uh, basically my sound video and game controllers. Um, so I can see here the latest version. I, I last updated my graphics card driver on January 24th, and the next, the the latest version is um, February 28th. So I, so uh, probably honestly, after we finish this uh, webinar, I'm going to go ahead and update that. Um, and it is it is really important to update these um, because they do pretty much tell your computer how to function. Um, especially uh, with when we're talking about three shape, the GPU drivers are really, really important to keep those up to date. Um, so again, driver booster is the one that I use. Um, Evan, what do you do? You have a, a certain software that you use, or no? I mainly um, uh, well, I've got the one for my motherboard through ASUS that mm -hmm. will do all of the those components, and then I have since I have a AMD graphics card, I just they have a software suite similar to the. Uh, uh, GeForce experience that NVIDIA has. And mm -hmm. so I just use that. Um, so cool. Yeah. And if I'm having any weird issue that pops up, then that'll usually be the first thing I'll check is the driver updates. Um, a lot of times, you know, what some of the bugs they're fixing are not necessarily something that comes up in, you know, every scenario, everyday use. Um, but it is always good to try and keep those updated unless there is, of course, a known issue, which would you would usually find out about um, on their site. Yep. Uh, let's see if we have any questions here. Uh, Francisco, uh, Francisco asks, uh, good afternoon, guys. Can you please show us the location of the files you suggest to be backed up uh, of the jobs in the Composer from Asiga? Um, to be honest, I don't really back up anything from Composer uh, simply because it's a very, it's a very light software. Um, if there's any print jobs that you really want to save, I would just save them in a folder and then back them up in your regular Windows backup uh, schedule. Um, the other, th the, the one thing that you might want to save would be your uh, your INI files. Um, and let me see if I can pull up. I think I have Composer installed on my PC. Let me look here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Okay, so I am in my file explorer. I went to uh, my local, my C drive, my local disk, uh, and I'm gonna go to program files, and then a Sega, and then composer. And now we have a materials folder right here. If you really want to back these up, you can. Um, you can just copy them uh, or include these in your Windows backup uh, schedule. Uh, you can do that. But to be honest, it's 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 it take I mean it takes so little time to if you need to like reinstall that your composer software the amount of time that it takes to reimport these from Asika's website is minimal um, so that's you know that's that's totally up to you um, but this is where that's where you find those uh, uh, those material files yeah. 
if you end up ever making a custom material file that you might want to back up because you won't be yeah. able to get it from um, a Sega site or a reseller. Mm -hmm. uh, so like if, if you send resin into us and we send you back a file, then definitely keep a copy of that somewhere. Yep. Um, Jennifer Taylor. Hi, Jennifer. Um, Jennifer asks, how many gigabytes should the hard drive have? You know, um, I, I, that's kind of a preference type thing. Um, I would say if it's going to be your, like your, your boot drive and your actual storage drive, I would say no less than 500 gigs. Um, and I would even probably go with, with, if it's a hard disk, I'd probably get a terabyte because they're not that expensive these days. Um, but again, my, my, my ideal setup is to have a boot drive and then store, then separate storage drives. I like to keep everything separate because I'm kind of OCD like that. Um, in which case my boot drive is 128 gigs. I have a, um, I have a, a 500 gig SSD and then I have a terabyte hard disk. Um, so that's kind of where, where preference comes into, gonna, into play a little bit. I'm going to show my screen just to show some of those options. Yeah. Which one is that? Okay, so this is just on Amazon. Um, some other places, uh, Newegg, you can get uh, PC hardware. Those are two, usually the two I use, and I'll just do price comparisons between them. Um, this is that NVMe drive that uh, Bryce mentioned. So unless your computer has this uh, form factor compatibility, which a lot of the ones that unless you're getting new uh, motherboards in them, probably don't have it, or unless they're custom builds. Um, but you can get these uh, three or two and a half inch drives, and they're fine. They're just not quite as fast as these, and they're going to be cheaper. But you can see even with an SSD, that's 500 gigabyte Samsung, uh, who makes excellent drives. That, that's actually, I only run these Samsung drives in my computer. Um, you 90 know, bucks 90, is crazy. 90 bucks for a 500 <laughs> gig. And so I've got, yeah, I remember when I put, bought my two of these, they're <laughs> quite a bit more. Triple but even, price, you know, yeah, yeah. So uh, 164 bucks for one terabyte. That's about double probably what you pay for a regular hard drive mm -hmm. of that same capacity. Uh, but, but it's still I, not breaking the it. bank these days. So. Yeah, and you're gonna there. There's a serious speed increase um, yeah. from even a 7200. Um, RPM. Oh yeah. So, you know, you could get hard disk up to a feet. yeah uh, up to an SSD. There's a there, I mean there's a serious performance increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless it just you want the cheapest thing. I, I at this day and age I would go SSD all the way. Um, yeah, as long as it's not gonna yep, break absolutely. the bank. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Francisco asks another question. Where does Composer save the builds? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, you have to manually save your builds in Composer. It doesn't save anything unless you actually tell it to, um, in which case you designate where you want to save those builds. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Man, time is flying. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's talk about... Um, let's see. Let's, let's start to talk about um, common IT and three-shape issues. Um, so a lot of the calls that we get are um, a lot of times not even three shape related. A lot of times they're IT um, and those IT issues are kind of impacting three shape in some unpredictable way. Um, the, the biggest one that we see, and this is, this is very true on uh, client server setups is when the windows defender firewall, that, that firewall will, it will wreak havoc on a client server setup, honestly. And I've seen it do some crazy things. Um, so as a general rule, um, uh, you want to have that firewall turned off um, for a, at least for a client server setup. Uh, chances are if you have that firewall turned on, uh, and a lot of times, even if you add three shape as an exception, uh, it will still block communication uh, in some capacity between the client and the server. Um, so that's probably issue number one. Evan, do you have anything to add to, to the firewall, firewall um, deal? Well, yeah. So a lot of people ask the question, you know, about like antivirus and firewall software, um, because and 
general computer use, it's a good idea to have it on there, especially like on your home computers, just, and especially if you're not a techie person, that's usually where people get in trouble is they accidentally click some link on the internet that is not, you know, actually a, a legit link and then something downloads and now they've got, you know, yeah. uh, some kind of virus. However, those virus, antivirus softwares, they do a lot of checking, at like um, kind of low level system uh, resources, which a lot of like, I know are the cam software and also three shape. Uh, sometimes they can register false positives. And I, and I actually had a case of one of them actually deleted a one of the uh, files that the uh, scan software needed and literally had to you couldn't even recover it. you had to reinstall the whole system Jeez. Um, and so generally i know three shape states this and i'm pretty sure they, they still say this now that it, they don't really support any virus software being on there because of what it can do um, so really what's recommended is that these computers only be used for you know cat cam not you know you know facebook on your lunch break and uh, answering random emails and stuff like that um because I mean, as long as you're smart about what you're doing online then you're protected um so i just wanted to add that that your mileage yeah. may vary if you depending on what you know antivirus software you put on there if yeah. you put any on there um yep cool so cool um the one of the other uh, one of the other big issues that we run into is network discovery. Uh, Evan, if it's cool with you, I'm going to go ahead and share. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yep. So network discovery again. This this usually comes into play with uh, uh, client server installations. Um, but I'm going to go down here. My system tray. I'm going to go into my network settings. Um, and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to network and sharing center and then advanced sharing settings. So this network discovery um, in layman's terms allows uh, allows devices on the same local area network to communicate with each other. Um, if you have these off, your your client server uh, installation is is definitely going to fail. Um, and what what I see a lot is um, especially labs and, and doctor's offices that have an have an IT company. Uh, a lot of times we'll, we'll start messing with some of these settings, like turning off certain network discovery settings. Um, and then that's that you're going to start to have issues with your three shape software. So if you start to, for some reason, like your clients just won't connect to your server, um, check this, make sure that your that a, the firewalls are off and B, uh, your network, all of, all of these network discovery options are on, um, probably nine times out of 10, um, when a, a, a when someone is calls in and is having issues connecting to the server it's one of those two things almost i mean almost all the time um it it's it's usually always some kind of uh some kind of networking issue uh with those settings not even necessarily three shape but just windows um let's see let's let me grab my notes here uh let's see windows updates we kind of already touched on that um, basically install the Windows updates. Um, I know some of them are bad, um, but it's a, there's a good chance you're gonna run into issues if you don't install them. Um, I just wanna you, add to that real yeah. quick uh, about you know Windows updates. So especially since you can't opt out of Windows updates anymore, um, it's important to also keep your, your software up to date. Uh, now with 3Shape, unless you've opted out of lab care, then you can get the most current one. And the thing is, if you're, if you, are not updating your software, there's a good chance you run into issues with a Windows update because it breaks one of the low level um, code references that that old software was developed on. So you wanna keep everything up to date uh, to have the least amount of issues. Yeah. Especially like, and again, that same thing with our, the CAM software that we sell, which was some 3D and Mailbox, uh, which has an optional license. And so we did have people who, I mean, they were probably five or six years where they didn't pay the maintenance and then windows 10 or even updates to windows 7 came out and when it updates it just it broke the software and unfortunately you're stuck either if you can rolling the software back or paying all that maintenance all at once to be able to get to a software that'll work on current operating systems so it's always a good idea to try and keep everything up to date um, so you avoid those kind of issues yep good point 
Um, let's see. All right, let's talk about what Evan and I uh, really have wanted to talk about this whole time, and now yeah. we're almost an hour in. We're just now getting to it. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about PC updates, hardware updates, and PC builds. Um, I think this is this is something that Evan and I could talk about, and actually we do talk about uh, at length. Um, yep. So one thing that is um, just kind of the nature of our uh, our industry is when three shape ships a PC, um, that PC is going to be uh, probably at least uh, one to two years behind in terms of hardware specs, um, and that's unavoidable. Um, there's 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 no way because because nowadays there's a new generation of processor every single year, um, and um, it would just be impossible to to literally stay on the absolute latest you know uh, architecture. Um, so and, with that in mind, oh yeah, go ahead, Evan. Well, I just want to throw in there, uh, it, with like HP and Dell, uh, the the big reason that you know you might buy a computer and you're not getting the latest gen, whatever it is, is because you know they will create a system build that they know works and then they stick with that and as long as they can and then you know rinse and repeat. So they may jump generations. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, and you know this is going to be true even if you go to like office max or best buy the same thing applies there most of those prefabs are on are probably a, a generation behind maybe even more um so so with that in mind one thing that that is really important is either updating your pc or updating the hardware in your pc um ev and i are both fans of building pcs so and it's really it's honestly not that hard to do anybody can learn how to do it you can watch a youtube video and learn how to it's how addicting. to build a pc it is addicting <laughs> it's very addicting and it's fun and yeah. um you get a lot of enjoyment out of it at least i do um but uh i do want to kind of go over some of the different or some of the main hardware components and um kind of where the state of the industry is what this is going to do for your pc and why um, why you may want to upgrade. So let's start with CPUs. Um, I'm pretty sure Evan and I could talk about just CPUs for uh, an entire day uh, yeah, because we're nerds. <laughs> yeah. um, but basically what we're looking at, you're looking at, there's there's two main CPU manufacturers. There's Intel and AMD. Um, Evan and I are both AMD guys um, and we have been for years. Uh, AMD has always kind of been the underdog in the in the uh, in the industry. Um, they have usually uh, they 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 usually um, engineer uh, cheaper CPUs that don't perform as well as Intel. Um, but one thing that we've seen in the last year to year and a half is uh, that's really flipped. Um, uh, AMD has made some huge advances in CPU technology, and and really they are uh, radically outperforming Intel at this point. Um, the new uh, the new AMD Ryzen processors, the new Ryzen 3 line, um, we've seen huge performance increases. And uh, one area that AMD has really um, uh, historically lacked in is single core performance, which is really, really important for 3Shape. 3Shape is relying very heavily on single core performance. Um, and, and we've seen uh, uh, AMD is actually, uh, in, in the benchmarks I've seen, overtaken uh, Intel's latest generation in terms of single core performance, which is a first. I mean, I, I Evan, has yeah, that ever yeah, happened? I, I don't remember yeah, AMD in ever. The early 2000s, actually, um, AMD was still like, I mean, they were competing with Intel. They had the mm -hmm. first 64 bit architecture, they also had the first dual core. Um, but in, and when the Intel Core i series came out, that's where they Intel kind of ran away with it technology wise. Um, but yeah. now they've, it's kind of reversed. They've been stuck trying to get to the next uh, or get to the next fabrication uh, method, their 10 nanometer. And they've just been struggling with that because uh, um, and that's one thing AMD doesn't have to struggle with anymore. They they sold off their fabrication process and now they have mm -hmm. companies that specialize in it. Just yep. work on that part. Um, so, yeah, uh, Intel's feeling it now, uh, but I've been seeing some stuff that they they may be have uh, some new stuff coming that isn't necessarily going to blow anything out of the water but it'll at least bring the competition back a little closer but yeah we'll see i'm i'm gonna go ahead and pull up since we're starting to talk about some pc componentry um i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um for those of you that want to uh maybe you want to update some components or uh, build a PC altogether. 
Uh, this is a website I use, and it's, it's very, very popular amongst um, PC enthusiasts. It's called PCPartPicker.com. Can uh, Evan is, uh, is am I sharing the correct screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. So PCPartPicker.com. Uh, I use this website all the time, um, and the nice thing about it is they have uh, it will compare prices. Like, so let's go. Let's go to CPUs. Let's go to browse products, and I'm going to go to CPU. Um, and let's just go, uh, because I'm an AMD fanboy, uh, I'm going to go with AMD and, uh, let's just let's click on that AMD. Yeah. Uh, let's click on the, the, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. This is, uh, this is kind of the flagship, uh, for the third generation Ryzen's. And it, it, in my opinion, this would be, this would be the go-to for the average laboratory. Um, it's it, in terms of price point and performance, it's, it's right, it's right there. I mean, it's, it's a very, very good. Uh, performing uh, CPU for the price. So one nice thing about PC part pickers, you can see it will compare prices from all different manufacturers. So you've got Amazon, B and H, Newegg, and Best Buy. Uh, if this is there, there are even a couple other retailers that it will throw in if this product is available from that retailer. Um, and uh, and it's 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 really nice. Uh, you can you can price shop. Uh, the other nice thing that you can do if you're wanting to like totally build a, a a custom PC, um, you can do an entire system build and uh, PC part picker actually has built in a compatibility checker. So uh, let's start, let's just pick a, let's pick a CPU and we're gonna pick the AMD Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 5 3600. Uh, so let's go, let's go ahead and add that. Um, and now uh, let's go ahead and choose a motherboard. Now, because I've already selected that, that processor, when I go to choose a motherboard, it's only going to show me motherboards that that have the the proper socket for that CPU. So CPUs all have different different sockets, um, and they're usually kind of grouped together. So the Ryzen processors use an AM4 uh, AM AM4 plus is that right? AM4 plus Evan? Yeah. Yeah, AM4 plus socket. Well, AM4. Yeah. Or AM, AM4 socket. Um, uh, Intel, different series of Intel chips use different sockets. So the nice thing about PC Part Picker is it will automatically filter out products based on what you've already selected and check for compatibility. So that's why I use this site. It's 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 great if you're just learning how to build a PC and you necessarily don't know everything about memory uh, memory module uh, formats and sizes and CPU sockets. Uh, it's super helpful. Uh, I use it a lot and and the price checker. Uh, is a really solid feature as well. Um, so now I can see it's only going to be showing us motherboards that are compatible with my CPU. So let's just pick one. Actually, <laughs> that's my motherboard. I didn't mean to actually pick that. Um, so now let's go into uh, memory. So now if we choose memory, it's only going to show us memory modules that are compatible um, with all of our other components. Um, and uh, so so it's a super nice feature. Um, so Let's go kind of go back, backtrack to CPUs a little bit. Um, Evan, uh, if you don't mind, yep. just give us a, a brief rundown of, of why updating your CPU matters so much, uh, especially in relation to uh, some 3D millbox and 3Shape. Um, what All kind right. of performance increases do you see jumping up, you know, maybe a couple generations in technology? So the big thing that you're going to see, uh, especially with, you know, if you've had your tower, it, more than a uh, probably two three years now um is that if upgrading your cpu is going to net you a lot more cores and potentially threads if it's a hyper threaded uh, cpu which just means the computer can do more tasks at the same time without you noticing a difference um, now not all softwares are designed to fully utilize like all the cores so um just as a comparison my three shape tower which is five years old um it has a quad core i7 so you get four physical cores and each one has two threads so that nets you eight uh logical cores the computer we just built and put in um here that has a amd ryzen 9 3900x in it that has 12 physical cores and uh 12 thread or two threads for each one so that nets you 24 possible threads the other thing you'll notice if you were to actually go look at this stuff side by side is your core clocks are going to be much higher on uh, newer content, which means each one of those threads can 
uh, put more information through the pipeline than one of the other the core older yep. cores. So it's kind of almost been an, an exponential <laughs> growth over the past couple of years of cores and and speed. So um, just as a comparison, and we did have a question in here about AMD processors with Nilbox um, from mm -hmm. another webinar yeah. uh, with uh, Mike Webb, who is the president over at Sim Systems, um, where they have in the past had some issues with uh, AMD processors. Um, I'm not sure what the last one he tested was. I think when I was talking to him a couple of years ago, it was maybe the first gen Ryzen. And with the first generation of anything, there's going to be, there were driver issues, uh, et cetera. We have just uh, built a system with a 3900X in it and um, just comparing it side by side to uh, running the same, calculating the same job in Millbox on my Intel. Now, again, this isn't a current Intel, so this time would be not quite as drastic a difference if you had a current Intel chip, but uh, there could still be some differences there. Um, so on mine, a full uh, roundhouse all on four uh, with five axis undercutting uh, calculator on it takes 50 minutes on that one. It takes yeah, five, zero, five, zero minutes. Yeah. Five, zero minutes to do the calculation. Mm -hmm. Um, to do the, uh, on this new one, it takes uh, 12. So, wow. you know, huge difference there. It's not all just because of the CPU. Um, you know, mine doesn't have an SSD in it. That one does. So that also, uh, can help. Uh, also there's some more Ram, uh and, and the new one is faster ram so but just in general that updated system i mean you can see why i can it, the cost of i think it was about 1900 dollars um that you know is definitely worth it especially if you're talking about you know sitting there waiting on stuff now obviously you probably wouldn't have your cam technician just sitting there watching it calculate but um anytime you can cut out of that kind of stuff uh, it's worth it uh, on the three shape side, uh, Millbox will use about, I think, uh, pretty much every available thread that it can take a hold of. Uh, three shape, uh, not, I don't think it's quite as uh, multi threaded at this point, um, but it, it yeah. does. I noticed between my computer and the new one um, that post processing of the scan data happens way faster. Um, and then reloading an order, that also happens way faster. Um, so it, there are reasons uh, to definitely keep your, your hardware up to date. The other big one with three shape is if you're going to be getting into roundhouse cases and you just have a stock, even if you had a current stock three shape tower, that only comes with 16 gigs of RAM and they all, they recommend 32 gigs, if not more, if you're going to be doing like opposing full arch cases mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. And um, it, it definitely, it, it makes a difference in your workflow. Um, and I want to give a, a quick shout out to Dr. Brandon Stapleton, who just uh, took the plunge and built a monster of a PC because he was having some of those same issues um, just with the stock computer. With the uh, When they were getting into these big cases, they were spending a lot of time waiting on it to process data or even issues where the software would hang or crash because it would run out of memory. Um, and as far as I know, I believe most of that's been resolved um, with the new system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. The PC that that Doctor Stapleton built was uh, made, he made, it's me, great. Uh, made me made me a little jealous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. So let's talk about uh, quickly. Um, so I don't know that we have a whole bunch of time left, but let's talk about memory um, because you kind of you kind of briefly went into that. Uh, memory is really really important for three shape. Uh, very critical. Um, and uh, a question that we get a lot is, um, you know, I want to I want to upgrade my RAM or, or memory, same thing. We use those terms interchangeably. Um, I want to upgrade my RAM, and uh, what do I need to do? Um, so let's I, I quickly want to talk about um, what to look for when you're looking at updating your memory. So uh, let's see. I'm gonna. Am I still sharing my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So when you're updating your memory. Um, the, my recommendation is, uh, let's say you have 16 gigs uh, in your PC right now. What I don't recommend is just going out and buying another 16 and throwing it in there. Um, there's many reasons why that's that's not the best the why that's not the best idea. The number one is not all memory is compatible. First of all, um, these memory wafers are all uh, 
they're, they're manufactured in different lots with different um, uh, tolerances at different facilities. Um, and we actually, there is actually, a, to my knowledge, a, about a 10 to 20% failure rate if you mix memory from different, different lots. Um, so RAM modules are really intended to be used together, purchased together, um, et cetera. So um, with that in mind, if you're looking to up, upgrade from 16 to 32 by 32, um, so I am here on PC Part Picker, and I'm going to go ahead and specify, um, let's say we want to do 32. Um, your next, your, what, the next thing you need to decide is do you buy, do you buy four modules of eight gigs or do you buy two modules of 16? My best, uh, my, or my recommendation is that you buy two modules of 16. Um, and Evan, was that, would you probably agree with that or would you go with, with four by eight? Uh, I would do two sixteen. Okay. If, if you're if you're going thirty two, that just because, um, you know, there is the chance of if you're mixing and matching of having problems. But um, if you get if you were you know down the road, if you want to go to sixty four, you could get another as long as it's like same brand, same speed. Yeah. And and, and clocks and all that. Um, then it'll probably work. Um, again you could potentially still have issues but at least then you've got the option of upgrading without buying a, a whole new four by 16 of to get to 64. yep so um one thing that evan mentioned there was clock speed um so just like a cpu your memory has a clock speed um and this is really really important to look at when you're choosing memory um here on pc part picker we can see the speed here we have a speed column um and we can actually filter by speed if you're going to be building a new PC, I would not go below um, 3,000 megahertz. Is it, is it measured in megahertz or hertz? Megahertz. Yeah. Um, I would not go below 3,000 megahertz. Um, you go below that, and even if you get 32, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, it's going to be slower. Um, and the other thing that I do want to point out is when, let's say you've got 16 in your system right now, um, and you add... And you, and you get the same brand and everything, but and you get another 16, but it's a different speed and it's faster. So let's say what you have in your system right now is, uh, uh, let's say 2,400 megahertz and you buy uh, 16 more gigs at 32, your, your system BIOS is gonna ramp down the speed of that 3,200 memory to match the 2400 that you already have so even if you buy more expensive and faster ram it's going to it's going to it's going to ramp down the clock speed of it um so that's 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 a really important thing to look for is is the speed i would not go below 3000 uh, i would stay above i would stay above 3000 megahertz um and one other thing that is important is let's say you you know you buy uh, two by 16 gig modules, and you're going to swap them out for the two modules that you have in your PC. Um, I'm going to show you mine and see, hopefully you guys can see. So your PC is probably going to have four memory module slots. And I don't know that you can even see mine, but there are four. They're the, the my, light bars that are. Yeah. My, my, my super awesome LEDs, uh, are, are, uh, preventing you from seeing the other the other two but when you install these these uh ram modules if you're if you're installing two two sticks of ram and there are four slots you want to install these in the second and the fourth slot um the reason being is because that's that's what you're going to utilize your um your dual band uh essentially uh, memory buses that way um so two and four don't do one and two that's that's the that's the big tendency um you want to go with slot two and slot four anything to add evan nope cool nope that, that's let's see i think we had a question real quick yep let's see where'd that go um uh jacob oh, has yeah. one yeah about uh swapping mm -hmm. yeah so um, yeah, if you build a new computer, uh, so unfortunately, this this is the kind of a pain point. Uh, you can't, you know, you can't use a Cronus and just clone your drive and then stick it in. Uh, the biggest reason, one, is because 
uh, Microsoft Windows product keys are now linked to your motherboard. So it would detect that there's a different motherboard and say that you need to buy a new key. Yeah. Um, now, if you're if, unless you're actually buying the parts and putting it together yourself, then it'll probably come with Windows already installed. So then it's just a matter of like if you're buying, I'm going to share mine real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're not comfortable with actually building one. Let's see. So if you're not comfortable with actually putting it together yourself, then you can go, you know, like Alienware, which is Dell's kind of gaming uh, tier stuff uh, that'll have the components that you, you know, want for a higher end computer. You know, here you just kind of spec it out. Uh, you can also go through, this is where we went to build the one that we have, which is iBuyPower. And you actually pick the parts kind of like PC Part Picker. Um, it's all, you know, off the shelf kind of stuff and they assemble it and send it to you. Um, but you still need to actually move the data and that's gonna be more along the lines of transfer the data to a external hard drive you know, reinstall the software, import the, the data that you want. Um, and that's really about the only way that you're going to be able to do it um, with like the specific, you know, three shape data or, you know, mailbox data. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, let's see if we have any other ones. Um... Yeah, Brandon says swapping everything over was the worst part. Yeah, no doubt. Yep. Um, dental designing in the morning and crypto mining at night. <laughs> and more power yeah. to you, my friend. Um, uh, yeah, or you could uh, you could do folding at home and donate your PC power to uh, uh, researching the COVID-19 proteins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we can maybe stretch. I think we. I think we got maybe a few minutes here that we can touch on a last couple of little things. Uh, GPUs. Um, uh, GPUs are definitely important. Three Shape is more CPU and uh, memory heavy than it is GPU, but GPU is still very important. Um, as of right now, I believe Three Shape is not supporting AMD GPUs. Is that is that still the case, Evan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let me actually to put my screen back on because yeah. initially they had not, um, you know, the, in the past they did not support AMD anything. Um, but, so this is actually Three Ships PC catalog, but it also talks about um, specs for building. And so if you're doing this Studio App PC, so this is like dental desktop, then they actually do support, you know, AMD Ryzen as well as, of course, Intel. Um, however, the recommendation for the graphics card is still NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the main reason for that, I mean, that's yep. what they develop on so and test on, so they know it works. Uh, I've seen some yep. people running 3Shape on with AMD graphics cards, and some run it run fine, and then others, some, there'll be some quirks, and, uh, you know, like with rendering and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Generally, at least at this time, uh, stick with NVIDIA GPUs, um, but you can go with either AMD or Intel on the CPU side for three shape. Yep. Um, and when it when it comes to NVIDIA GPUs, basically what we're looking at now, the the, the latest generation is going to be the 2060s, the, the the RTX series, the the RTX 2060, RTX 2070, RTX 2080, and then if you really want to go uh, all out, the the RTX 2080 Ti. Um, but th that's kind of what you're looking at. Uh, honestly, the 2060 is going to be sufficient for, for just about everything you need when it comes to, to the software that we're working with. Again, they're mostly GPU or I'm sorry, uh, CPU and memory, uh, intensive. Um, so honestly, a 2060 is going to probably do you just fine. Um, installation of a GPU is super easy. Um, the, the key there, if you're going to, if you're going to swap it out is, is especially on, um, the more powerful GPUs is you will need a dedicated uh, cable from your power supply, uh, power supply cable. And most of them are going to use either um, a, a uh, probably either a six or an eight. Um, I'm blanking on the technical, technical name of the cable. Um, PCIe. PCIe. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, PCIe cable. Um, let's see, storage. We kind of already went over storage, but the difference between uh, M2 drives and SSDs and HDDs. Um, and we went over a compatibility check on PC part picker. Um, that's about that's about all I've got. Let's see if we have any more questions. I don't see anything. Evan, what do you what yeah. do you have? Do you have anything to add? I was just going to pull up a picture that shows. Am I still? Yeah. Um, a GPU that has when you buy one of these off the shelf, then most of them are going to have uh, this external power connector. Now, the thing you got to be careful about, you know, if you're building a new computer and you're using kind of off the shelf parts, then a, a standard power ATX power supply, which is that ATX is the form factor, will have these power cables. If you're trying to buy one of these cards and stick it in like a pre built HP, you probably are going to run into issues where they those power supplies are built to just have the components in it that they build and ship with. So you may not even have these external cables, which I know is the case in, in mine. Um, so for that, you, you can still upgrade a GPU, but you got to find one that draws all of its power through the actual motherboard connector, which are going to be lower end um, ones. So at that point, you kind of got to ask yourself, do I want to mess with that? Or do I just want to go ahead and build, you know, a, a yeah. new system yeah uh, chances are you're going to be better off just building a new one for the most part yeah yeah definitely cool cool awesome um well that's let's see uh check with that i think one that's... Last check for questions that's about all i've got um yep so let's go ahead and wrap up um uh thank you everybody for joining us um Evan and I could definitely go on the rest of the day, but we're, yeah. we'll spare you all of our uh, yeah. all of our dork talk. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks everybody. Um, this is gonna this is being recorded, so this will be available on the website uh, if you want to go back and watch it or have somebody else uh, take a look at it for some PC information. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. Uh, our tech support phone number is one eight hundred. 626-5651 extension 1437 and our email address is product support at witmix.com feel free to reach out to us with any questions um, we're more than happy to talk to you um, and uh, otherwise uh, have a great day i hope everybody has a great weekend i think uh, at least in our part of the the country we're gonna have some some decent weather so uh, yeah. i think i'm gonna get outside this weekend and uh, maybe get some yard work done so <laughs> Yep. Yep. All right. Have a good weekend, awesome. guys. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Stay safe.